Welcome to episode 95 of Gods and Heroes of Ancient Greece. My name is Mylinda Butterworth, and today we continue with the tales of Troy and the story of Achilles fights the river god Scamander. When the fleeing Trojans reached the waters of the swift-flowing Scamander, they separated. One part poured toward the city to the field where the day before Hector had won his victory over the Argives. Over them, Hera spread a thick drift of cloud to hinder them from fleeing farther, but the others, crowded close to the margin of the river, threw themselves into the swirling current. The shores round about echoed with a sound. The air they floundered like locusts which fire had driven into the water, so that the whole river filled with a tangle of horses and men. At that the son of Peleus leaned his lance against a tamarisk on the bank, and only his sword in his hand rushed after them like a god. Soon the water grew red with blood, and under his throes groans and gasps rose up from the waves. He raged like an enormous dolphin that hurtles through a bay devouring what fish he can, and even when his hands were numb with killing, he seized twelve youths still alive in the waters, dragged them to the shore almost out of their minds with panic, and handed them over to his warriors. These were to fall in atonement for the death of Patroclus, his friend. When the hero again rushed to the river, greedy for new kill, Lycon, son of Priam, struggled up through the water and Achilles paused at the sight of him. Once, in an assault by night, the son of Peleus had surprised him in his father's orchard as he was carving a rim of his chariot from the shoots of the wild fig. On that occasion, Achilles had taken him by force and sent him to the island of Lemnos, where Euneus, son of Jason, bought him as a slave. And when Aetian, prince of Imbros, another son of Jason's, visited his half-brother in Lemnos, he ransomed the youth so delicately fair for a high price and had him brought to Arisp, his city. For a time Lycon lived there, but then he ran secretly away and managed to reach Troy. This was the twelfth day since he had returned from captivity, and now he fell into the hands of Achilles for the second time. When the son of Peleus saw that his knees failed him, that he was floating weakly with the current, he said to himself in amazement, <laughs> What miracle is this? Now that this boy I sold as a slave has reappeared, I suppose all the Trojans I slew will crawl forth out of the night of death again. Well then, let him taste the point of this lance, and we shall see whether he can come up even from under the earth. But before Achilles had time to aim, Lycaon swung himself ashore, clasped his knees with one hand, and touched his spear with the other. "'Have pity on me, Achilles,' he cried. "'For once I was put in your care. At that time I got you one hundred bullocks. Now the ransom will be three times that number. Only for twelve days have I been free from the pain of long captivity.' But Zeus must hate me, for he has again delivered me into your hands. Do not kill me. I am the child of Laotho, and not of Hecuba, the mother of Hector who slew your friend. But Achilles frowned, and his voice was relentless. <laughs> Do not speak of ransom, you fool. Before Patroclus died, my heart was ready to spare. But now all shall die, you too. Do not look at me so pitifully. Did not Patroclus die, who was infinitely more glorious than you? And I myself see how tall I am, how strong, and yet I know I shall soon meet my fate at the hands of my foes one dawn or dusk. When Lycaon heard him in this way, he let go the spear, spread wide his hands, and received the sword thrust in his neck. Achilles took the body by the foot, tossed it into the water, and cried mockingly, Now, let us see if the river to which you have made so many vain offerings will save you. These words roused Scamander, the river god, who sided with the Trojans, 
and he pondered on how he could trouble this dread hero and save his charges from those implacable hands. Achilles, meanwhile, leaped at Asteropus of Paenea, son of Pelagon, who was just coming out of the river holding high two spears, and the river god suffused him with pride and courage. Angrily he surveyed the merciless doing of the son of Peleus and ran to him boldly. Who are you who dares to oppose me? asked Achilles. Only the sons of unhappy parents measure their strength against mine. Astropoeus replied, Why do you ask my lineage? I am the grandson of the river god Axis. Pelagon begot me. Eleven days ago, I came here with my Paeonians to aid the Trojans as their ally. Now fight with me, great son of Peleus. Achilles brandished his lance, but the Paeonian cast both spears at once one with each hand, for he could use his left as deftly as his right. One cracked three metal layers of his adversary's shield, and the other grazed his right arm at the elbow, and the blood spurted from it. And now Achilles hurled his lance, but it missed his opponent and drove into the earth to half its length. Three times Aster Opoas pulled it with his sinewy hands, but he could not wrench it out of the ground. When he tried a fourth time, Achilles fell on him with his sword and plunged it into his body until the bowels gushed out, and he sank into the throes of death. With jubilant shouts, the son of Peleus stripped him of his armor and let the body lie as food for the eels which swarmed near the shore. Then he rushed on the Paeonians, who were straying fearfully along the bank. Seven he slew with his sword, and he had not nearly sated his lust to kill when suddenly Scamander, the angry lord of the river, rose up through a swirl of waves in the guise of a hero and called, Son of Peleus, you are working evil beyond the measure of man. My waters are clogged with the bodies of the dead and can hardly find a way to see. Leave off. I obey you because you are a god, said Achilles. But my arm shall not cease from slaying Trojans until I have chased them back into their city and tested my strength against Hector's. So saying, he rushed in pursuit of the Trojans and drove them towards the river. But when they tried to save themselves by leaping into the water, he forgot the river god's command and sprang in behind them. Then the river god grew swollen with wrath, churned in its turbid waters and flung the dead on the shore with bellow and crash. The torrent crashed against the shield of Achilles. He, he tottered, and he grasped the elm tree, but it fell, uprooted, and tore back the bank. And now he raced over the field, but the river god searched after him with wild waves and caught up with him, and even though he was fleet of foot, Whenever he tried to resist the waves, washed over his shoulders and swept the ground from under his feet. Then the hero complained to heaven. Father Zeus, he lamented, will not one of the immortals have pity on me and rescue me from this angry river? My mother deluded me when she said that I should die by the shaft of Apollo. Had Hector only slain me, had the strong but killed the strong, that seems I am to die ingloriously like a boy herding swine who wades through a mountain stream in winter and is swept away by the turbulent waters. As he moaned and wailed, Poseidon and Athene and the semblance of mortals came to him, took him by the hand and comforted him, saying that it was not his fate to be drowned in the river. And before the gods left him, Athene filled him with such strength that he bent his knees and bounded out of the water until he again stood on dry land. But Scamander still cherished his anger and reared to taller and taller crests, calling aloud to Simwas, his brother. Come, brother, let us both of us together tame the power of this man, or he will raz Priam's citadel to the ground this very day. Call the springs from the mountains, urge on the torrents, lift high your waters, and sweep great blocks of stone in your tide. Neither his strength nor his armor shall avail him. 
deep under the flood that let him lie, with mud and slime for his burial mound. I myself shall heap over him shells and pebbles and sand, so that the argives will not even find his bones. When he had spoken, his commander made for Achilles, churning with foam and blood and corpses, and the waves soon towered over the hero's head, for Simwas had joined his waters with those of his brother. When Hera saw this, she screamed aloud in fear for her favorite, and then called to Hephaestus, My son, dear lame son, nothing but your fires can cope with the strength of the river. Rush to the aid of the son of Peleus. I myself will rouse the west and the south winds from the sea, and raise up a blast that will fan your flames, and utterly consume the Trojans. You... Meanwhile, she'll set afire the trees on the bank of the river and flame through Scamander himself. Let neither flattery nor threats hold you back, for only fire can halt this destruction. Obedient to her words, Hephaestus turned to flames, winged his way over the field. First, he burned the bodies of the Trojans Achilles had slain. Then the field grew dry and the waters were stopped. On the banks, the elms, the willows, the tamarisks, and the grass began to burn. The eels and the other fish grew weak in the fiery breath and gasped for fresh air. Finally, the river itself was a river of flame, and out of the depths, Scamander the god cried humbly, Blazing god, I do not wish to fight you. For how am I after all concerned with the quarrel of the Trojans and Achilles? So he pleaded while his waters hissed like fat in a cauldron over the fire. And he turned to the mother of gods and implored her, Hera, why does your son Hephaestus torment me? Am I more at fault than the other gods who came to the aid of the Trojans? But I shall be still if you wish it so. Only let him leave me in peace. Then Hera said to her son, Hold, Hephaestus, no longer shall you beset an immortal god for the love of a mortal. And the god of fire quenched his flames. Scamander returned to his bed, and far away Simwas calmed his riotous waters. And here is where I end my tale for today. But I'll be back with more tales, many more tales. Until then, my friends, enjoy the journey.